So in this video, we are going to discuss a very important topic known as Sanskritization. You must be knowing that this question is basically a potential question for UPSC to be asked in future. Now, the term Sanskritization, it was given by M.N. Srinivas. So this is the, uh, we are basically writing an answer, right? So you have to make sure that all the points are covered in systematic way. So the term Sanskritization was given by M.N. Srinivas, who was basically a field scientist. Who was basically a field scientist. Even though he believed in wisdom, text he uh, gave more credit to reality. Okay. So he basically he was someone who believed more in wisdom uh, and text, right? But he gave more credit to reality more credit to reality okay so quite contrary to the idea that caste is basically a closed system right Srinivas found out that there are realities such as the caste system is changing and the changes are reported from different part of India so you must be knowing that the caste the caste system is basically a closed system but M.N. Srinivasan he basically gives some reports that these caste system is changing okay it is changing how it is changing we'll discuss in the form of sanskritization we already have talked about westernization right so there are certain forces like westernization modernization sanskritization you know these will be some of the endogenous or exogenous forces which are responsible for the changing of caste system all right so the member of lower caste they try to imitate 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 means copy basically so the member from lower caste he imitate or he copy the uh, you see the customs rituals ideology tradition of upper caste so the lower caste will what will do he'll give up meat liquor they'll start fasting they'll start worshipping they'll start doing pujas and everything they'll you know they'll basically try to separate themselves from the other lower caste and this is not a generation like intra generation this is basically something that if one generation starts other will follow and the third generation will see some results of it so that this particular some results was basically discovered by mn srinivasan all right so the next topic here is that with complete one thing it was very clear here and that is the intention to move up in the social hierarchy and he was called uh, this particular process as Sanskritization in 1952 so this term that is Sanskritization we gave this term in 1952 right so you have to make sure that this point comes in the introductory part so to refer to those processes of changes where the members of lower caste imbibe the lifestyle of higher class okay so it is basically the same same thing but in the different way that lower caste people try to imbibe the lifestyle lifestyle of upper caste all right now this uh, now this the process done at the level of group or level of caste in opposition to westernization which takes place at the level of family or individual you must be knowing that westernization is something that comes at the family level people they get educated right they develop with the help of technology they, they become powerful or they basically acquire certain type of status in society but here sanskritization it is basically an individualistic this is very possible that a member of a family uh, will be getting a lot of respect in society rather than other than other members of his family 
so this happens through the process of sanskritization because what that person does is he try to follow the lifestyle of upper class uh, we call it as you know there are three uh, ways rajasik tamasik tamasik rajasik and satvik gun so what the lower caste person will do is that he'll give up the tamasik and he'll switch to satvik guna okay now what this satvik ramasik and tam uh, tamasik and this satvik is we'll discuss it uh, in the third chapter and i have already uploaded the video so you can just go to there now according to shrinivasan sanskritization is a process of change is indigenous or exogenous in character so according to mn shrinivas the process of sanskritization is basically a process of change in both indigenous and exogenous in character both okay it is both because he did not use the word sanskritization to uh basically you know such changes in the beginning the early 1940s he worked among the kurds okay now this is important because your answer must have this part he works among kurds of mysore karnataka okay and found out that many of the kurds have imbibed am imbibed or copied the lifestyle of brahmins and they have become basically a teetotaler so they have given up meat okay they have give, given up meat no meat no liquor they started fasting worshiping and they basically they also started the rituals which were practiced by rituals which were basically practiced by brahmins and had claimed the status of brahmin to designate this process of cultural change he used the term brahminization now this particular change okay lower caste in by uh, trying to copy the upper class particularly brahmins so m n shrinivasan in 1942 called the concept as brahminization or brahminization okay but and later on many other studied which was done by bernard cohn am shah and mj shroff came up with their respective field studies and argued that lower caste cannot copy only the brahmins they also copy the lifestyle of kshatriya and vaishya and other higher caste okay so you know as m n shrinivasan gave this brahminization in 1942 so what happened is that these names are important just write it down bernard cohn am shah and mg shroff bernard cohn am shah and mg shroff they come up with their respective field studies and they said that lower caste they imitated upper caste and not just brahmins okay they also imitated kshatriya they also imitated vaishya okay or basically upper caste in general clear so now even shrinivasan was very smart person he is someone who is open to the critic and learn from there so they basically you know but in all the cases they emulated that or they just made sure that the lifestyle of the dwija or twice born was what the lower caste people they copied and the term brahmanization is not capable of capturing these terms or this complex so after 10 years that is in 1952 because the term brahmanization was given here in 1942 in 1952 the term was given as sanskritization okay good now <clears throat> now the word sanskritization was chosen on the following logic okay there has to be certain logics 
so first is that the most of the cast values or the cast rules they are derived from the text okay and these texts were written in sanskrit so why sanskritization because you know this cast and the things have been taken from text and these texts are basically taken uh, written in sanskrit so the first logic behind the name sanskritization these texts specified how the ritual associated with the lifestyle of different caste okay because these rituals this text they had particularly talked about the lifestyle of each and every one all right so thus the hindu social order or life of the hindu comes from two kind of sources hindu life it comes from basically two kinds of sources the first is the sanskritic hinduization sanskritic hinduism and second is local hinduism or non sanskritic hinduism the life of dvija falls under the category of sanskrit hinduism and the life of shudra basically falls under local hinduism or non sanskritic hinduism the shudra and untouchable do belongs to hinduism their lifestyle were not guided by any sanskrit text and they worship local gods god is right so which may not find place in the sanskritic script these are built in mechanism that the local people emulate or try to copy the tradition of upper caste called as sanskritization so basically you know there are people like brahmin kshatriya and vaishya which are basically dvija or twice born okay so they are someone who gets all the sanskrit text authority the rules have been specified okay but when it comes to shudra or untouchable they are basically not someone who find there a lot of mention about their responsibility apart from serving these upper three caste or class caste not class right so this is the first thing third is that the term sanskriti in indian context refers to culture so sanskriti particularly not sanskrit sanskriti sanskriti it means basically culture okay and or basically a lifestyle and sanskritization refers to adopting the lifestyle of higher caste now sanskritization refers to the process of upward social mobility in which the member of local caste adopt the ritual of the higher caste that is dvija shrinivasan explains the meaning of ritual okay and he said that adopting the right or the ideas of pure and impure that is sacred and profane that i can write down here so here he said that the adopting the idea of sacred and profane or sacred and mundane mundane profane i would like now what the sacred and profane is uh go to the chapter called as religion okay and you will find the mention of sacred and profane there all right now this is the first that is what the people that is the lower caste people they started adopting rituals of higher caste and started dividing into sacred and mundane the second is that the rituals in vedas restricting women from doing manual labor outside the domestic sphere like basically homes of higher cla- uh, class right not sent for the manual labor because of prestige and esteem because women of the higher caste or they were not basically uh, sent outside for the work because that women is basically you know a, a sense of prestige or esteem that is been prescribed now third is that when uh, the adopt of the rituals okay when they adopt the rituals they generally adopt in names of joint family living but you must be knowing that it is difficult for a lo- a big family to sustain at low cost because of the various barriers that they have but this is possible in the upper class upper caste because there is a lot of resources extra resources which are available 
but the resources are scarce okay so this is also the second reason now we talk about the features of sanskritization all right now we will talk about the features now sanskritization is a long drawn process and not a overnight process that is the first part i told you that first generation will start third generation will get usually it takes up to 2 to 3 generation okay it takes up to 2 to 3 generation and 5 to 6 decade okay sanskritization is a group of process basically and it does not take place at individual level it takes place over entire caste entire caste because you know when a family or a person try to copy the lifestyle of brahmins there is basically an opposition okay and these opposition can be only sustained when there is entire caste standing against them but that usually does not happen you must be knowing that sanskritization is basically a group process Sanskritization needs to be distinguished from Hinduization. See, this process of Sanskritization is basically different from Hindu Hinduism or Hinduization. As Hinduization is a term coined by Max Weber. Hinduization is a term coined by and this can even be a question. Max Weber coined the term Hinduization who defined it as a process of whereby tribes or ethnic group and other non tribes communities start copying the lifestyle of Hindu so what happens in Hindu is basically the tribes or other caste they basically try to copy the lifestyle okay they try to copy the lifestyle of Hindus Now Hindus, it means any, okay, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, untouchable, anything, every, everyone. So this particular comes under Hindu. So that is the term which was given by Max Weber. All right with this. Now, their customs and traditions are something that they copy and now it becomes the part of social order, Hindu social order. So the Hindu code of conduct is basically a broader then the code of conduct of Dvija within which the Shudras are also included. Now Sanskritization needs to be distinguished from Hinduization because Sanskritization does not lead to structural change. Okay. Sanskritization does not lead to structural change. Okay. Sanskritization does not lead to structural change but it only leads to but only leads to positional change positional change second is that sanskritization has certain prerequisite okay now this sanskritization it has some prerequisite so what these prerequisites are so what happens here is that there has to be no resistance from the upper caste because if someone of the lower caste they try to imitate or copy the upper caste basically what happens here is that there is an opposition there is a resistance and the prerequisite for Sanskrit Sanskritization is that there should not be any resistance first is that the control over traditional capital like land cattle okay and houses this is prerequisite because if a community have to grow then they are they have to have a strong capital base. Second is that touchable status or above the line of purity. They should have, Shudra is fine but at not untouchable. They need to have the status of at least above the touchable status. And for a caste to Sanskrit, Sanskritize, it is important to prove that the contemporary identity is mistaken one. And it is the only then you legitimize once claim for the higher caste now whatever we talked about sanskritization cannot be complete unless we do a case study and these case study will be very important because you will be writing this case study in any other example you can 
so and you must be knowing the sanskritization without a case study your answer is mm, as good as two or three marks so village called as bisipara it it was studied by fg bele okay and bispara is basically a multi ethnic village in distinct uh, district called as phool in odisha okay bispara basically in odisha now bele came from up and the changes in the colonial forest policy had led to the widening of economic activities of the villages right and new avenues came up for the income which led extension of the economic frontier of the village out of these changes two caste group derived a maximum benefit okay the first was the local cultivator local cultivator which were known as chhasa and the second is the oil man which was known as teli now there were other groups like kond basically tribes kshatriya warrior and sundis sundis basically a trading community trading community so at the top of village that is caste hierarchy the kshatriya came they were basically the basically the rulers followed by sundis they were trading community right vaishyas and then chasa and teli with the new wealth these caste group especially chasa they acquired new capital new land and started changing their lifestyle and they gave up the traditional customs and adopted the new custom new rituals of kshatriya and claimed the status of kshatriya the chasa were more in numbers and when they contested the village elections they won at the panchayat and ward level right so this also gave them more power and symbolic equivalence with rajput and they tried to get their daughters married into the already established rajput family many of them became basically you know successful over a period of few decades and they were considered equivalent to kshatri the chasas that we are talking about okay now bele concluded that they had all the preconditions of sanskritization like they had <coughs> they had acquired the traditional capital they had symbolic equivalence and they were able to convince the people that they were originally kshatriyas by the family second case study here which is very important is of i hope you must have gone what happened in bispara and you'll never forget this the second is jatavs of agra jatavs of agra jatav of agra by owen m lynch so jatavs were traditionally shoemaker okay and after independence the jatav were became economically vibrant due to tourism and influence of outsider so jatavs got connected to market in whole process acquired the new wealth they bought house large patches of land and started claiming the status of kshatriya the they basically copied some of the lifestyle and practice of kshatriya but could not give up the shoe making because it was connected to their economy so shoe make- making had a structural visibility and they found in difficulty to push their agenda so what they did is that they also formed an association called as jatav young man association and was given the responsibility of writing history so that they could celebrate their claim to be kshatriya they looked into the history and claimed that originally jatavs were kshatriya in order to escape from the woes of parshuram the kshatriyas of agra took the shoe making 
in order to escape the parshura and they claim that the contemporary identity is a mistaken and the claims of kshatriya study was legitimate and owen lynch found that found out that they were not having untouchable status right and they were not given any upward mobility the brahmins would never willingly to provide the ritual status so when they were denied of the opportunity to sanskritize they assembled in large number and tried to enter village temple by force and started violating the caste rule by entering into the public spaces which were denied to them now they started a movement contested election entered the village politics lynch called this as a politicization when the jatavs were denied to move up in the ritual ritual area so what happened they adopted the political way and politicization is final alternative of sanskritization thus sanskritization is an orthogenic or endogenous process so you see that you know even jatavs what they did they acquired wealth but even their status was not improved so they arranged the people to write history okay and even after that that was not possible so what they did they just made sure that whatever they are doing right now is something which will you know will they to take the help of politicize politicization they took the help of politics and they raised so this is basically a way of exogenous change the first process that we studied was endogenous bispara was basically endogenous this is exogenous now what we can conclude from this particular part is that sanskritization so your answer must have all the headlines that we had okay started with definition history connecting line body part feature characteristics case study both indo exo conclusion all right now we'll read the conclusion as you can see the sanskritization is basically a historic specific function as it refers to a particular period in indian history and may not hold reference in contemporary world second is that sanskritization is applicable only to the middle level of caste hierarchy where the shudras move up and it is not meaningful at the bottom okay at the higher level dvija sanskritization is meaningless because kshatriya cannot basically be a you know brahmin they are happy there even vaishyas are happy even brahmins are happy so sanskritization is only applicable for the lower caste all right so second is that it is only applicable to middle level of caste hierarchy middle hierarchy the third is that sanskritization as we talk where shudras move up and it is basically applicable to the middle level of indian society that is what we have talked now if we talk about the model of social structure in india so you must be knowing that there are twice born caste we call them dvija okay then there are shudra untouchable and tribals okay so this dvija or twice born what they used we'll write down this dvija what way they used was basically westernization the shudra they used sanskritization the untouchable they used politicization and the last that is tribal they used hinduization you have to remember this because this will fetch you good marks so according to charan sanskritization is not an universal process and this is true right according to charan according to charan sanskritization is not a universal 
phenomena all right or process it is not applicable equally to all parts of india for example in rituals punjab traditions of sikhism is so strong that ritual status of dwija is not an attractive model to copy okay and in western punjab the influence of islamic tradition is so profound that the twice born model is unable to attract the groups of the lower social category the uh, member of lower caste of the western punjab they adopt basically sufism mysticism when they want to come out of the caste subjugation right and according to lynch sanskritization is a part of universal process of elite okay and everywhere in the world the masses tend to copy the elite and it does not refer any thing new as you can see that it can be regarded as a kind of anti uh, you know anticipatory socialization that you can anticipate before and a drive of lower caste to higher caste now sanskritization lacks theoretical rigor okay sanskritization it lacks theoretical rigor for example according to harper we have got a lot of scholars here okay you have to remember handful of them and you have to you know fit 150 to 250 marks of words so you know i'm giving you already content of around 500 to 600 words or even i think it is reaching now 800 so what you have to do is you only have to filter some of the words which fit your this criteria so according to harper sanskritization is not a historical concept no why he says that because it is a functional concept so harper says that sanskritization is basically a functional concept okay and because it helps the lower caste in adopting adoptive basically uh, their endeavor of adopting now according to herald the gold sorry according to herald according to herald gold according to herald gold the motive behind sanskritization is not to copy the lifestyle of higher status or higher class but to change the dominance of higher caste and it is a mechanism to express their discontent for their socio economic deprivation they suffer and the process of sanskritization does not rely on ritual status sometimes they adopt secular status to move up and according to broadley herbert the lower caste of bareilly of up have adopted the surname of higher caste like verma and singh without adopting the ritual status so he is of the opinion that moving up in the caste hierarchy is not necessarily through caste or ritual idioms all right so even you can just copy the surname that's fine in the all right so in the uh, eastern up the member of lower caste have developed great fascination of gold okay in the you see the eastern up the member have you know developed a fascination or you know so much of fascination of gold because you know they have accumulation of gold is basically regarded as a sign of social status so they also eastern up they basically collect or accumulate lot of gold and they are basically they started keeping small silver box for beetle which is also a caste status now if there are situation where the member of lower caste to move up the hierarchy there is also change that is higher caste member adopt the custom traditions of the lower caste so this is not something that uh, only lower caste copies the higher caste even the higher caste they are also copying the lifestyle of lower caste for example liquor meat giving up of their own tradition so a study was conducted by sk shrivastav okay sk shrivastav now this sk shrivastav basically in punjab 
in uh, ruler uh, area villages which were under the dominance of jat the villages which were basically under the dominance of jat the brahmins were not allowed to till the land so sk shivastava says that in punjab as you can see that the ritual uh, village which were under the dominance of jat the brahmins were not allowed to till the land okay that is during 1940 so they experienced the deprivation and the local brahmins started adopting the lifestyle of jat by changing the ceremony of life cycle ritual by changing the surnames and even by delaying the upanayana ceremony so just to enter into the system of production so sk shrivastava calls it as a desanskritization so now we studied the sanskritization and now study this particular part that is d sanskritization so in d sanskritization upper caste upper caste they copy the lower caste upper caste copy the lower caste that is all you have to remember and the example is jat 1940s was the time when brahmins basically they delayed upanayana delayed upanayana or upanayan and they also you know tried to copy the lifestyle of the jats so it implies that it is not basically or it is not only uh, always adaptation of rituals of higher caste uh, which is an index of caste mobility but it is also a situation where rituals of the lower caste is also adopted and desanskritization is a part basically it is some uh, we call it as a criticism to the shrinivas concept of sanskritization so thank you for watching the topic i think is very important and i would request everyone else to complete the other topics as well so good luck prepare